Hello everyone, so we're going to be reading the next chapter, chapter 10, and this one um, is titled Freedom of the Press. Okay, so uh, Judy Morgan was a reporter for the Westfield Gazette, the local newspaper. Westfield was a quiet little town. There was the occasional burglary, the teenagers got rowdy once in a while, and there was some shouting at the town council or the planning board now and then. But mostly things were calm and orderly in Westfield and every Thursday the Westfield Gazette proved it. Ted Bell sold advertisement for the paper and he had a daughter in fourth grade at Lincoln Elementary. He told, he told Judy that a bunch of fifth graders were making trouble and were not obeying teachers anymore. That there was something about a secret code word that they were all using. And half of the students had been kept after school one day last week, including his own little girl. The only other story Judy was working on was about 18 new trees that were going to be planted along East Main Street. The trees could wait. This thing at the elementary school sounded like a real story. So Judy Morgan showed up at uh, Lincoln Elementary School at 3 o'clock at the day after Mrs. Chapman had been to visit Nick's parents. The sign at the door said all visitors must report to the office, and she did. On the bulletin board outside of the office, Judy saw Mrs. Granger's notice about the punishment for using the word friendle. She stepped back two paces, aimed her camera at the notice, and snapped a photo. She read the notice once more and then stepped into the office. Mrs. Freed, the school secretary, looked up and smiled. May I help you? Yes, I'm sure you can. My name is Judy Morgan and I work at the Westfield Gazette. I'd like to know that about the poster outside the office. The one that the word, oh, the one about this word, friendle, who should I talk to? Mrs. Freed stopped smiling. She was sick and tired of anything to do with that word. For the past week, her phone had been ringing off the hook. If it wasn't a parent complaining about a child who had, stay after, who had to stay after school, it was someone from the school board trying to get in touch with Mrs. Chavman or Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Freed pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes. She said, you'll have to speak with the principal. Let me see if Mrs. Chavman is free. She was. There isn't a principal alive who won't find the time to talk to someone about the local newspaper. The, re the reporter was invited into Mrs. Chapman's office. Judy noticed right away that the principal was not comfortable talking about this stuff. When, when asked about the poster outside the office, the, outside the office door, Mrs. Chapman laughed and said, Oh, that is nothing really. Some kids have been playing a prank and it was time to put a stop to it. The principal's laugh sounded like a phony to Judy Morgan. And did that notice put an end to the prank? I heard that a lot of children were kept after school last week. Would you tell me about a little bit about that? Parents would like to know what's going on. Mrs. Chapman looked like, well, like the kid who had been sent to the principal's office. She squirmed a little in her chair and tried to smile. She said, well, we do have a little problem, but it's under control. Mrs. Granger may have overreacted a bit. I don't think that the children have been really trying to be disrespectful. They are just having some fun, and it's just more like of a difference of opinion. And then Mrs. Chapman went on to tell the reporter what she knew about the word "frindle" and how it had become a popular and how it had become popular among the students. Judy Morgan took careful notes. And when the principal had finished, Judy said, "Would you mind if I ask Mrs. Granger a few questions?" Mrs. Chapman said, no, not at all, but Judy could tell that the principal wished she would just go away. What well, could she say, though? Mrs. Chapman couldn't very well keep the reporter away from Mrs. Granger because, after all, America is a free country with free press. If Judy really wanted to, she, she would talk to Mrs. Granger sooner or later. It was sooner. In three minutes, Judy Morgan was standing at the doorway of room 12 looking in at Mrs. Granger. There were about 15 children sitting at desks scattered around the room, busy writing out their 100 sentences. She knocked and the teacher and students looked up from the work. I'm Judy Morgan from the Westfield Gazette. Mrs. Granger, may I have a word with you? Mrs. Granger stood and came out into the hallway and closed the door. Judy could see past her and saw that every kid in the room was straining to listen. Judy noticed Mrs. Granger's eyes right away. Gray, maybe flecked with a little gold, a very sharp but not hard or mean, just bright and strong. The reporter 
It didn't waste words. So I hear that you plan to stop the students from using their new word. How goes that battle? Mrs. Granger did not smile, and her eyes got even brighter. First of all, it's not a battle. I'm merely helping my students to see what this foolishness sh that this foolishness sh should stop. Such a waste of time and thought. There is no reason to invent a new and useless word. They should each learn to use the words we already have. But of course, all of this is just a silly fad. And when you add an E to fad, you get fade. And I predict that this fad will fade. And Judy looked up from her notepad and asked, Any idea how it all got started? Mrs. Granger's eyes seemed to almost catch on fire at the question, and she said, yes, I have a very good idea how it got started. It was just one man's idea, a fifth grade student named Nicholas Allen. And now you will have to excuse me, Miss Morgan, I have papers I must grade. And with a brief, firm handshake, Mrs. Granger ended the interview. The reporter didn't leave right away. She walked back through the hallway and sat on the bench outside the office so she could look over her notes to make sure that they made sense. It took her about five minutes. Then Judy stood up, put her notebook into her large black purse, waved goodbye to a frowning Mrs. Freed, and headed out the door. As she walked to the parking lot, five or six kids who had just finished writing their sentences for Mrs. Granger came out another door. Judy walked beside them, listening to them laugh and joke. Then she asked them, why do you kids keep saying Frindle? Don't you hate staying after school? A boy who was almost falling over from the, his weight of his backpack looked up at her and smiled. It's not that bad. There's always a bunch of my friends here. I've written that sentence 600 times now. And the, and then the kids said Mrs. Granger didn't even look at their punishment papers anymore. They were sure because where you were supposed to write, I am writing this punishment with a pen. Everyone was writing the word friendle every fourth or fifth sentence. And Mrs. Granger hadn't said anything. One girl bragged that she had written the word for no 45 times on her sheet today. She grinned and said, that's a new record. And this boy named Nick, Judy asked, has he had to stay after school? The kids giggled and a tall boy with reddish brown hair and glasses said, Mrs. Granger has kept Nick after school so much that everyone thinks that she just wants to adopt him. The reporter smiled and said, do you think I can find Nick and talk to him after in the afternoon? The boy looked at Judy for a second and then said, I don't think Nick would want to talk to you right now. He might say something stupid and get himself in trouble. Then he grinned at his friends. The kids laughed and poked and punched each other and headed off down the block. Judy drove back to her office and started writing. The next morning, a brown envelope arrived at the Gazette offices addressed to Judy Morgan and below her name was written Frindle Story. When Judy opened it, there was a class picture, the fifth grade at Lincoln Elementary School. Mrs. Granger and the six other teachers were standing at the ends of the rows, and the kids were dressed neatly, hair all combed, but there was something odd about the picture. The reporter looked closely and saw that each kid was holding up a pen, and each little mouth was puckered in the same way. She was puzzled for a second, but then she said softly, Of course! They were all the same frindle. Written on the back of the picture in neat cursive, was third row, fifth from left. Judy looked at the picture, and there, there she saw the same grinning red-haired boy with the glasses that she had talked to in the school parking lot yesterday. She chuckled and said, "Well, well, well. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Nicholas Allen." So, if you guys see, and then let me show you this picture as well. So if you see here's I have um the thing says I'm writing this punishment with the friendle. I'm writing this punishment with the friendle. I'm writing this punishment with the friendle. So now there's a new uh, a news reporter, right? So because the story is getting so big, because they're getting so much popularity because of this word friendle, they're bringing in people from the district, they're bringing in other uh, principals, they're bring and now they have a news reporter. So people who um who go in and find out stories and that is who judy morgan is so she is a news reporter and and she's there to figure out why are all the kids wanting to use this story you know what's really going on and um and then she you know she actually got a the picture now the fifth grade picture of all of them saying friendo at the same time holding the pen so she's actually she thinks it's pretty clever and she thinks it's pretty funny so we'll see what what goes on